Well, everyone, now I know it's been a while, I've been really busy, but today I have a few things to share with you guys. First, I want to talk about energy storage. Now, when we think of energy storage, we usually think of things like batteries, and that's probably the most popular way to store energy that most people know of. But of course, there are alternatives. The most popular alternative to storing energy in a battery other than a fuel is probably thermal energy storage. When most people think of thermal energy storage, they think of storing thermal energy in water by raising its temperature and then lowering the temperature later to get the energy back out. But there are alternatives to using hot water for storing thermal energy. And one of the interesting alternatives is using ice because we do use a lot of energy to keep things cold. So, I've made a project and I want to show it to you guys today. Okay guys, so this is my icebox project. This is what the outside looks like. It's just a shipping container and it's sitting on steel frame with wheels and this is the condensing unit. There's the refrigeration compressor. There's a condenser. There's a fan. And that's the controller for the compressor. You probably can't read it now, but it's reading minus 7 degrees Celsius. But the interesting part's inside. So I'm going to undo these lashes and give you guys a look inside. Alright guys, this is the inside of the ice box. And as you can see, this is actually solid ice. So, the inside of the shipping container is filled with water and there is a 50 foot roll of copper tubing and that serves as a refrigerant evaporator. So after about four to five days of the condensing unit running, the water freezes into a solid block of ice. And if you remove power from the condensing unit, it will take about the same time, four to five days for it to all melt. And this is the area where all the items to be cooled in this case it's just water but let's say you could put uh, food in there or other perishables in there and it will hold that temperature at about 40 degrees for about four days right now it's much colder I don't know if you can see the frost but the whole idea is thermal energy storage so let's say for instance you would run the condensing unit using a solar panel. So when the sun would hit the solar panel, then the condensing unit would run. It would build ice, and then the energy would just be stored in the ice. There would be no batteries at all. Or let's say a windmill would be the same case, but let's say it was just running from a power supply as it is now, and you would have the energy storage there for... Uh, about four or five days so you would go for days without needing any electrical power and it would still hold temperature so why don't we go ahead and see what the actual temperature is this is uh, infrared thermometers measuring 24 degrees Fahrenheit that's minus 4.7 Celsius So, it's pretty cold now, but as I said, about four or five days that would all melt and it would all be gone and you'd have to recharge it, so to say. So, a few more details about the compressor. This is actually a compressor with a brushless DC motor inside and the uh, motor controller is on the side there. And right now I just have it running from two computer power supplies in series, so it runs from 12 or 24 volts DC. So the idea is you actually can run it from, say, solar panels or a windmill or even battery backup, even though the whole point is it wouldn't be required here, but it uses R134A refrigerant. It uses about 100, 100 watts when it's running and freezing the ice. And of course the power usage goes down when it's got all the ice frozen, but... Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it, and that's just what I've been working on for the past few months. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it, 
and I hope you learned something today and of course if you have any comments or questions you can leave me a comment you can message me and I'll be glad to hear from you see you soon